At the top level of airspace organization, ICAO has divided the world into 19 air navigation regions, including the North American region, European region, and Asia region, to name a few. These regions are then broken down into what are called flight information regions, or FERS. Within the North American region, for example, there are several FERS, such as the Seattle FER, Oakland FER, Los Angeles FER, etc., and you know which region you are flying inside of when you talk to their corresponding center controller, such as Seattle Center or Oakland Center. These FERS can then be further broken down into sectors, which you will recognize when, for example, Seattle Center asks you to contact Seattle Center on a different frequency. While flying between Hawaii and the mainland, the majority of our time will be spent inside the Pacific region, or PAC. Within the PAC region, you will be flying through the fur known as the Oakland Oceanic Flight Information Region. There are a few different Oakland Oceanic fur sectors, the sum of which covers most of the entire Pacific Ocean, though for our purposes the fact that there are a few sectors doesn't matter. ICAO describes oceanic airspace as airspace in which no sovereign rights are exercised and it generally lies beyond the borders of territorial waters, which are accepted by many, but not all, countries as 12 nautical miles off the coast. So under the ICAO definition, oceanic airspace normally begins about 12 nautical miles from the land borders of states along the ocean. Oceanic airspace is subject to ICAO procedures and regulations, and both private flights and airline flights are expected to abide by these regulations. The FAA Airman Information Manual, on the other hand, defines oceanic airspace as any airspace over the seas where line of sight communications or ATC surveillance via radar or ADSB are not available. Air traffic control is provided using procedural control and procedural separation in accordance with ICAO. This means that as far as the FAA is concerned, oceanic airspace begins when radar contact or VHF radios are no longer available. When looking at an oceanic airspace map, you will notice that the Oakland Oceanic Fur begins anywhere from 100 to 200 nautical miles off the shoreline of the western United States. This is far beyond the 12 nautical miles that ICAO describes, and it fits in well with the FAA's definition of being beyond line of sight for VHF communications or ATC surveillance. The Oakland Oceanic Fur begins at the border of the Seattle, Oakland, and Los Angeles Furs, about 100 to 200 nautical miles off the west coast in most places. On the Hawaii side, the Oakland Oceanic Fur border is, on average, about 225 miles north northeast of the Hawaiian Islands where Honolulu Control Facility, or HCF, begins. You know you are entering the Oakland Oceanic Fur when ATC tells you that radar service is terminated and that you need to contact San Francisco Radio, which is the controlling agency for the Oakland Oceanic Fur. More on San Francisco Radio in a bit. The very high frequency VHF airband in the US falls between 108 and 137 megahertz, and we use 118 through 132 for our normal two-way radio communications with ATC. These radio waves are anywhere from one to 10 meters long. This band of radio waves requires line of sight to exist between the transmitter and the receiver, either an airplane antenna or a ground-based antenna. The usable distance range of these VHF radios at altitude is, at best, a few hundred miles. At our most distant point from either Hawaii or the mainland, we will be about 1,000 nautical miles from both shorelines. This means that VHF communications with an air traffic controller simply won't work. So we need to use a different radio frequency band that will be effective over much longer distances. High frequency radio waves, or as we call it, HF radio, is the answer. Unlike the aviation band VHF radio waves, which were 108 to 137 megahertz, HF radio waves are considered anywhere from just 3 to 30 megahertz, and they range anywhere from 10 to 100 meters in length. Due to this much longer wavelength, the physics of which are beyond the scope of this course, these radio waves can actually refract off the particles in the atmosphere in a layer of the atmosphere called the ionosphere. This means aircraft that are a thousand miles from any ATC antenna can shoot a radio message up into the atmosphere and it will bounce off the particles in the ionosphere back to Earth and can be received by an antenna. This type of propagation is called a sky wave. A VHF radio transceiver will not transmit or receive HF frequencies, so aircraft must have these specific HF radios installed. As a side note, 
code 7700.com forward slash communications has great in-depth articles about this topic. Because of the noise and static generated when listening to HF frequencies, pilot hearing fatigue became a problem. To combat this, a system was developed to eliminate the need to listen to HF radio hiss for hours on end while waiting for any ATC messages. This system is called Selective Calling System, or Cell Call, and it is essentially a pager for the flight crew. Each aircraft cell call system has its own four-letter code. When ATC needs to get a hold of that aircraft, they will send out a unique tone over the airwave and the cell call receiver that is calibrated to recognize that particular tone will chime in the cockpit and or an enunciator will illuminate. This alerts the pilots that ATC needs to talk to them, so they need to turn up their HF radio and transmit a message to ATC that they are answering cell call, implying that they are ready for the message. There are a limited number of cell call codes in existence, so it is possible that two aircraft share the same code and are listening to the same frequency at the same time. In this case, a cell call alert would occur in both aircraft at the same time, but it's generally not very common. There will typically be two HF frequency issued, primary and secondary. As the name suggests, primary frequency is the go-to main frequency, and secondary is more of a backup. You will probably not ever have to deal with secondary frequency, but monitor that frequency on your second HF radio. The HF frequencies in use depend on a number of factors. Because these radio waves are being reflected off particles in the ionosphere, the time of day and solar events taking place can affect the ability of these particles to reflect the signal back down to Earth. The rule of thumb for frequencies is, the higher the sun, the higher the frequency. If you are flying at night, the HF frequency will probably be a lower number. During the day, it will be higher. A list of the most commonly used frequencies should be on whatever chart you are using. To get specific frequencies that are in use in real time, visit radio.airink.net forward slash pacific before your flight or ask your center controller when they hand you off to San Francisco radio. Most ATC facilities will not have these frequencies on hand, however. San Francisco radio is a completely separate entity from our air traffic control facilities, as you will soon learn, so you may have to dig around a bit before you find a controller who has these frequencies. Who is sitting on the other end of the HF radios? Well, actually, the person you'll be speaking with is not technically an air traffic controller. They are a radio operator, and they act as the middleman between the pilot and an actual air traffic controller, similar to when calling up a flight service station. The radio operator is a messenger. The air traffic controller is the one who actually issues the clearances, and they are the one who must do the planning and coordination to ensure traffic separation. When you are flying between the mainland and Hawaii, you will speak with San Francisco Radio, and that is how they should be addressed. Anytime you are issued a clearance from San Francisco Radio, they will use language similar to this. ATC clears November 123 Alpha Bravo to climb to flight level 380. They will never say, San Francisco Radio clears, because they are just messengers. This service is run by Collins Aerospace out of a facility in the Bay Area, about 25 miles from the Oakland Center facility, and they provide this service for much of the Pacific Ocean. The division used to be known as Air Inc, and they established many of oceanic-related standards used today, so the name Air Inc is still heard quite often. Because they are a separate entity from any air traffic control center, and because they are not located in an air traffic control center, it can take time for messages such as clearance requests and clearances themselves to be sent and received between San Francisco Radio and ATC. For this reason, it is very important for pilots to plan ahead any time there may be need for a clearance such as an altitude change.